this extra little sample of the Vetiver 46. There is a Vetiver 46 in the uh, box already, but I thought it'd make nice adapting sounds. See, Vetiver 46. Le Labo, Le Labo, Le Labo, Le Labo. somewhere else. Okay, there we go. I'm not smelling anything. Oh no. Okay, it's like subtle, spicy. That's all I'm really getting from it is that it's a very spicy scent. And it's so subtle. I don't know if like these cards just like don't do the scents justice. It's just regular paper that I printed off, but. Okay, let's try the next one. I just want to be sure. Okay, so that's Ambret 9. It seems very spicy. Next is another 13. Another 13. Could you spray, please? Okay, I can smell that one. That's good. That smells really good. I like that one a lot. So it says, another 13. In 2010, Le Lapo was commissioned by another magazine to, which, mind you, another magazine is the title of the magazine, to work on an exclusive scent. This project was born thanks to Sarah of Colette, who initiated the creative collaboration between Le Lapo and Jefferson Hack, editor-in-chief of another magazine. The result of this collaboration is another 13, a hypnotizing and unique scent. It's composed of Ambrox, a synthetic animal musk, making another 13 an addictive, dirty potion. Blended with 12 other ingredients such as jasmine, moss, and ambret seeds, absolute, which gives it a spike and shine. As the entire planet knows, Colette closed their doors December 2017. I don't know what that is. But luckily, we were able to welcome another 13 to our classic collection in our labs worldwide. So, um, it 
reminds me very much of Juliet as a gun, but a little bit um, more musky. But it's good though. I like it. I would wear it. Definitely gonna try um, to wear all of them and kind of see, unless they're like downright horrible, uh, see what the, how it smells on me. Uh, next is Bay 19. It's or B A I E. Seven. 
a natural and one-of-a-kind orange blossom creation that took more than three years to compose. Its innate nobility is enhanced by fresh floral and lemony notes, rounded out by musk and a succulent, sunny touches of bergamot, petite grain, and lemon. I think I'm gonna like this one. This orange blossom has intensity and a delicious ambiguity that gives everyone the absolute power of sensuality. Its innate nobility is is enhanced by fresh floral and lemony notes, rounded out by musk and the succulent, sunny touches of bergamot, a petite grain, and lemon. I'm a big fan of um, citrusy scents, and I, I try to like uh, break away from them because I have a habit of just buying those scents, and so I try to get other stuff, but it's just, mm, they all smell so good. specifically um, this is the perfume for you it's basically jasmine in a bottle like I said with a little bit of vanilla which is really really nice honestly it bounces out super good that's a really nice one very like um like innocent smell I don't know um, it smells very like about that one. It's like teetering on the old man side, which I'm not really surprised a lot to them, and the 
there's kind of a hint of baby, baby powder. Oh, I kind of just got that on my hand. It's not bad. None of these have been bad so far. It's just not my... Yeah, I'm just not crazy about that one. Nope, not for me. Okay, next is... I don't know how to say it. It's, it's either Lice or Lease.
smells like someone rubbed patchouli on leather. Listen, if that's your thing, by all means. First of all, I wouldn't say that's a female fragrance, but, you know, if we're going to gender things, um, feminine fragrance. Nope, I hate that. Okay, that's the first one I genuinely hate. That is not good. It's old man, old man, <laughs> old man, leather, patchouli. Okay. Next, I'm very excited for this one. And this is actually the scent that uh, introduced me to Le Labo. I have not smelled it before, but I've been looking for a good rose scent for a long time because I love the smell of rose. And um, rose extract and stuff is very expensive, so it's kind of hard to find a good perfume that actually like lasts long because it's so diluted. Um, but this is the Rose 31. Rose 31, the perfume's aim is clear to transform the famous grass. It's either grass or grasse or grass. G-R-A-S-S-E. Grass. Rose, a symbol of voluptuousness and unqualified effemininity into an assertively virile fragrance that could be worn by men and women. The result is a model of its kind, alternating feminine slash masculine with the disturbing ambiguity of the centifolia rose, quickly picked up by a chorus of warm, spicy, and woodsy notes such as cumin, opinum, opinum, Sear and a touch of amber in the background, the declared sensuality of gaic wood and its cystus, highlighted by a distinctly physical animal note, give this perfume a disconcerting sense of mystery. That sounds intimidating, but we'll find out. This room is starting to smell. sense in here. Crazy world, a lot of smells. <laughs> Comment down below if you know what that reference is from. <laughs> that smells good. That's really interesting. Um, it is not very rosy in my opinion. It's like rose, but mixed with like a very peppery, spicy smell. That's nice though. That's really nice. Surprisingly, uh, complex and just interesting. Wow. I can't wait to wear that one and see what that's actually like. Okay, next is Santal 33. So the, I, I briefly read the description of this one while I was cutting these, um, cutting them. Um, it's does not smell like something I'm going to like and, and also sounds inherently masculine. But anyways, Suntel 33, do you remember the old Marlboro ads? A man and his horse in front of the fire on a great plain under tall blue evening skies. A defining image of the spirit of the American West with all its implied about masculinity and personal freedom. This man, firelight in his face, leaning on the worn leather saddle, alone with the desert wind, an icon so powerful that every man wanted to be him and every woman wanted to have him. From this memory is born Sandal 33, the ambition to create an olfactive form inspired by the great American myth, still a source of fantasy for the rest of the world. A perfume that touches the sensual universi universality of this icon that would intoxicate a man as much as a woman that introduces, introduces our use of cardamom, iris, violet, ambrox, which crackle in the formula, bringing to this smoking wood alloy, Australian sandalwood, cedarwood, some spicy, leathery, musky notes, and gives this perfume its unisex signature and addictive comfort. Here is, in a few words, that was not a few words, <laughs> what Santal 33 is, an open fire, the soft drift of smoke, where sensuality rises after the light has gone. That was a full thought. That was a mouth, mouthful. Where is the sprayer? Nothing is worse than like spraying something in your eyes. Hold on a minute. That's not bad. That's not bad at all. It is more feminine. 
feminine than I thought it was going to be. I would still consider that for sure a unisex ascent, but I expected it to be like downright masculine. I smell like a hint of leather, spiciness, woody, woodiness for sure. That smells pretty good, honestly. That's, that is way better than I anticipated. Okay, next is the Matcha 26. I think this one, I'm not even sure you can buy this one in the U.S., but it comes in their discovery set because um, I didn't see it available and it said not shipping in the U.S., so I don't know. The Matcha 26, in the same way matcha tea is much more than just a drink in Japanese culture, the Matcha 26 is much more than a scent to us. It is a moment of introspection, a moment of self that offers a quiet inner celebration of grace and soulful beauty. A simple whiff it takes us away from the hum of the outside and brings us back in. Matcha tea accord is infused with a creamy fig note, grounded by soft vetiver. I also love vetiver, by the way, a side note. And textural cedar woods and uplifted by enticing bitter orange. Introverted and deep by nature, the Matcha 26 is a skin scent, something meant for, and only those individuals lucky enough to be very close to the wearer. It carries a noble stillness. To us, it is scented, reminder of home, of welcome solitude, and of all things familiar and treasured. I will say, whoever is writing this, I don't think they are a native English speaker. Um, there's a lot of, like, errors and spelling things, but like, not a lot, but a fair amount, I would say. Noticeable. But I'm also kind of like an English snob and a nerd. Like, I would do a spelling bee now. <sighs> Anytime. That's very subtle. sex off the bat. That's very unique. It is very mysterious. I'm thinking of like an old school film noir and I imagine this is what it smells like. I don't know if it's for me. However, I smell tobacco-y, very, like a fruity, not citrus, but like a fruity, like, I don't know, like, I don't, I don't know how to describe it. Peppery. Wow, that is a complex, magnificent scent. Great unisex one. That smells really good. Like I said, I don't know if it's for me. It's not really my style, but it's super unique, and I've never smelled anything like it. Interesting. I'm going to use coffee, coffee grounds after that one. But that smells really Next, 
evokes the smell of warm skin and resinous wood. This one is dark. A good, addictive, warm dark, as if the humid summer underwoods, their seeds and resins, were sprinkled with layers of musks and sweetened with drops of vanilla. The perfumer's notes say orange flower absolute, the unique cedar atlas, styrax, styrax, resins, absolute tonka, and musks. We say tonka 25. I like tonka bean. collection 
discovery sets or sets that you want me to do, um, let me know. Um, I love fragrances. Um, I'm a bit of like I'm, I'm a skincare junkie and a fragrance junkie, so um, I'm not opposed to ordering sample sets as long as they're like not zillions of dollars. Um, this set was eighty nine dollars, by the way, which I thought was a really good deal for um, not only the actual spray things but a decent amount of samples. Seventeen is very good, so. Um, not too, not too shabby. So, anyways, um, I hope you're doing 